What's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. Chris Pinnell here. We're taking a first look at week three of the NFL season for DraftKings and FanDuel. And this will be a more laid back, relaxed version of looking at the entire slate. Then we'll go over my core plays position by position later on in the week when we have more information available to us. And if you do enjoy today's video, make sure you like down below, subscribe to the channel for brand new, and let's dive right into it. And we're going with a bit of a different format this week for the early look. Now, when we do the final look video, we'll do a position by position. Put a lot of as we could talk through it. We'll run the optimizer at the end. But since it's so early in the week, Obviously, we have to wait for injury reports. There's going to be more information that comes out. And it doesn't really make sense to do the same exact format because we're pretty much just reiterating the same thing over and over. So we're just going to take a broader look at some of the teams that we have interest in this week, some of the games. A little reference players too. And then we're going to try to build a lineup at the end of this, just trying to make sense of the information that we did talk about, at least in the video. And I do want to mention that projections are obviously going to change throughout the weekend based off of what I've said earlier. So don't get these set in stone by any means. But we'll start up top here. We'll sort this by team salary. And Detroit looks like the most expensive team on both sides this weekend. Over on Vandal at $6,400. And then over on DraftKings, only at $5,400. But they had the highest implied team total of the week. Also the highest over under game in general, 51 and a half points. They're on the road in Arizona. So Jared Goff gets to say in a dome environment, which I believe. Pretty much all of his games, besides like one or two, were in domes this year, which obviously bodes well for Detroit's offense. They're still three point favorites here. And it's really hard not to like them. The only issue you would have against Detroit is these price tags. But overall, they are the top projection team, especially if you're looking at the entire team in general, because they are loaded at the running back position. Not only do you have Jameer Gibbs as your RB1, you also have David Montgomery. It's more of like a 1A, 1B scenario there because it's not like Jameer Gibbs is getting 20 plus touches on the ground. Dale Montgomery, he's the in-between guy. He's going to be around the goal line. Jameer Gibbs, kind of like their Alvin Kamara, although Alvin Kamara gets a lot more volume, but Jameer Gibbs has a similar skill set where he's very explosive and can do a lot of damage through the air. 6800 bucks for Gibbs, $6,100 for Dave Montgomery. It's a dream matchup versus Arizona Cardinals. As bad as the Los Angeles Rams were last week and they were getting absolutely killed, Kyron Williams still put together a somewhat decent game given the game script that they were in then obviously everybody here looks good jared goff game stacks with almond Ross st brown jameson williams i know st brown got beat up a little bit in last week's game but i'm assuming he's gonna be good to go sam laporta has been extremely disappointing so far this season at some point he's probably gonna turn it around i'm not sure when it's going to be but obviously this entire team is in play then on the flip side of this game you should have plenty of interest in the arizona cardinals 25 point plot team total they're only two and a half points off and Detroit's defense is really nothing to be concerned about. They're a bottom five team versus quarterbacks last season. And so far this year, Baker Mayfield released all game versus them last week. And then also Matthew Stafford over 300 passing yards in week one. I think Kyler Murray coming off a great game last weekend versus the Rams should be able to do decent again. Also, he has that rushing upside, which a lot of quarterbacks don't have. So that gives you a nice floor, especially like Jared Goff. He's a statue and he can only get there through other players. Kyler Murray can do it himself, but we did see Marvin Harrison Jr., Last week, have a bit of a ceiling performance, catching a couple touchdowns very early on in the game. So I don't mind the entire Arizona offense. I also don't mind any of the Detroit offense. So really, this entire game is stackable. You don't any, always have to stack with Kyler Murray because of his legs. But if you're going to, obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr., especially with what he did last weekend, it gives you more confidence. And then you also have Trey McBride down there at tight end. So I don't mind the game stack for either teams. And... The running backs look good. The wide receivers look good. The tight ends on either team, quarterback. So definitely one of the more popular games to stack up. Although, as you can see for Arizona, their entire stacks don't look as appealing just because it kind of flows through a couple of guys. It's Kyler Murray, Marvin Harrison, and then Trey McBride, and then also James Conner out of the backfield. But they're not projecting as well, but they're definitely in play, especially when they're a little bit cheaper than Detroit. Also really like this Houston and Minnesota game. I do not have the Minnesota Vikings listed on here because I don't really see myself stacking them up. But if you want to use Justin Jefferson, assuming good health, you want to run it back with him. That is perfectly in play. I did that last week with the 49ers. They didn't exactly crush. I mean, Purdy had a decent game. Kittle had a good game. Debo had a good game, but it wasn't a complete ceiling performance. They still did well. Then I ran it back with Justin Jefferson. Overall, it was a pretty decent lineup, but I was hoping for a little bit more in the touchdown department, I guess I should say, for Brock Purdy. So, but I do like... This Houston Minnesota game. Definitely one of the more popular ones, I think, to attack. And obviously, with CD Stroud, his wide receiver options are incredibly elite. Obviously, he's going to have the top quarterback wide receiver projection on the board here of all teams. But I really do like this offense. Now, Joe Mixon is currently questionable for this game. I don't believe he was at practice on Wednesday. So that could hurt the running game a little bit. But I guess that would just be a boost for the passing game. But for CD Stroud here, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, Tank Dell. 
all viable options. Dalton Schultz hasn't really done much this year. And obviously the addition with Stefan Diggs, you'd expect his production to be down, which it has been so far this year. But you don't completely X him out, but it's not really something you get too excited about, that's for sure. Another game that I think a lot of people might be excited about is this Dallas and Baltimore game. Currently has a 48 and a half point over under, which is the third highest, only behind the Saints and the Eagles, and then the Detroit and Arizona game. And I know both these defenses can be perceived as good, especially Baltimore, but points should be scored in this game. Two offenses that can certainly put that up. This game also features a one and a half point spread. So when you can get a really high scoring game with a close spread, that's obviously always going to garner interest. And on the Baltimore side of things, usually it's kind of just the Lamar Jackson show. You never really have to stack with Lamar because if you're looking at his pass catching options, it's Zay Flowers. And then right behind him, you have Bateman and Nelson Aguilar, and you really aren't just going to play those guys on a main slate. They are more so showdown pieces, and even then on showdowns, it never feels that great. And then we have Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely. Obviously, if you're looking at the uh, quarterback tight end stacks, Baltimore is usually going to be at the top because they have two very solid tight ends, and most teams cannot say that. But for me, it's probably just going to be Lamar Jackson. I doubt I'm going to, if I'm hand building, I doubt I'm really going to be playing any Lamar Jackson stacking lineups, but I do think he's a viable just quarterback in general. This week, if you want to force a stack option, you can do it, but that's not something I would typically do with Lamar Jackson. But then on the Dallas side of things, if you are playing Dak Prescott, it makes 100% sense to stack him up a bit. It looks like some of his pass catching options, these stacks look like some of the best overall this week. Prescott's only $6,600. Land's pretty expensive, but we do have quite a bit of value this week. Demarcus Robinson is cheap. Brandon Ayuk is cheap for the role that he will be in this weekend. Devontae Smith with no AJ Brown. And there's a couple other guys out there that do present value. So I really don't think that's going to be much of an issue this week. And obviously with Jake Ferguson very up in the air, it makes the targets a bit more condensed. And then it also gives you a pretty cheap tight end and shoemaker as well. Another game that I'm going to have plenty of interest this week. They do have the second highest total of the weekend at 49 and a half points. We're also on the road in the dome for Philly. We're going to be in New Orleans. 23.5 implied team total for the Philadelphia Eagles in 26, nearly 26 and a half. Here for the New Orleans Saints who have been on fire to start the season. You might have been able to call it a fluke versus the Carolina Panthers, but then they backed it up versus Dallas. Now, I don't think the Saints are going to keep scoring at this pace because they've been absolutely incredible. And it's going to come down, you know, the thing called regression, and that will certainly happen at some point. But the Saints have been playing some good football. They do have some pretty decent pieces on that offense. And if Derek Carr is going to play well, I mean, obviously there's enough around him to be able to succeed. And we've seen that so far in the first two weeks. Obviously, Alvin Kamara is amazing. Out of the backfield, Raheem Shahid, incredible, incredible speed out there. Chris Olave is obviously a very solid wide receiver. So they got things going right now. And I'm not scared of the Philadelphia Eagles defense. So I think this entire game is going to be stackable. Now, I specifically like Philly just because we know the big three. Now, A.J. Brown's going to be out for this game. And that, once again, condenses things. So you have Jalen Hurts at 73 and a bucks. Obviously, you have good passing upside. And we saw the rushing upside return last week in week two. Big game on the ground. For Jalen Hurts versus the Atlanta Falcons. Saquon Barkley is going to get pretty much all the touches he can handle in that backfield as well. And he's going to be using the passing game a bit. Unfortunately, he did drop that wide open pass. This would have sealed the deal for the Eagles. But we'll forgive him because that doesn't matter for DFS purposes. But Devontae Smith's going to be the wide receiver one in this offense. At only $6,900. Was heavily involved on Monday Night Football. And he's going to be a really nice value. Only $1,600 on drafting. He's over on Fandle. They're making it a bit tougher. At $8,000, like he's $400 more expensive than Nico Collins, $500 more than Marvin Harrison. Now, he's not quite CD Lamb price tag, but it is a bit tougher to get to him over on FanDuel. But outside of that, Dotson's there. Britton Covey was more involved than I thought last week. Then you also have Dallas Goddard, who didn't really return a huge game. But I love that Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith stack this week because it's really not that expensive. Then obviously, if you had the money for Saquon Barkley, it's never going to be a bad thing. Although I really don't love playing all three together because of Saquon Barkley scoring touchdowns, that is taking away from Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith because you really can't bank on Saquon catching a touchdown every single week. Then for the New Orleans Saints, it's a little bit cheaper here. I believe the overall price tag is cheaper. So we have the Saints at 4700 bucks. Yeah, Eagles right around close to $5,100. So that you can save some money and you also have a higher implied team total here. Derek Carr is below 6 k He's been playing great. Alvin Kamara's price tag is coming up. We were getting him in the 6K range, at least in week one, up to $7,500 now, but he's been obviously incredible. RB1 through the first two weeks, very small sample size, but he's going to get all the volume he can handle. Then Shahid, amazing deep ball ability. Chris Olave is a very solid receiver. And the Philadelphia Eagles pass defense, especially in the last drive last week, is not something to be concerned about. So I don't mind stacks on either side 
of the ball here. And the last overall game I want to talk about here is the Los Angeles Rams and the 49ers. Not so much the Rams, but they do have a couple decent pieces this week just because of the price points. But the 49ers specifically are going to be the talk of the week. They have several players that are going to be the highest owned players at each position this weekend. And it's just because they are so cheap and they're missing a couple bodies that pretty much get all the work in the offense. There's going to be no Debo Samuel, who I believe has roughly a 30% target share on the season so far. And obviously no CMC still. And they did not price up Jordan Mason once again. If you look at the price tags here, we have Brock Purdy at $6,000. Jordan Mason at 62. dollars I'm not sure what DraftKings is doing there. He should really be above $7,000. Honestly, pretty close to Alvin Kamara price tag. I think that's where he should be. Vandal had the right idea. They had him at $8,300. Kamara at $8,400. Saquon Barkley at $8,700. I think they did a much better job pricing this week. DraftKings, asleep with the wheel, $6,200. Once again, would expect him to be the highest on running back. If he's not, should be in the top two. But I currently am projected to be, I believe, the top for ownership projection's sake. Then if you move on to wide receiver, obviously Nadeep with Samuel this week, you take him out of the equation. And he also has rushing ability, so that's even more for Jordan Mason. But when you take him out, that vacates a lot of targets in this offense because the ball pretty much moves through Tebow Samuel and Jordan Mason here. So you now bring Ayuk sliding into that wide receiver one role. Then after that, it gets really ugly. You have Juwan Jennings, Chris Conley, I believe Ronnie Bell is in there somewhere. Obviously the rookie's still out due to the shooting. Then you have George Kittle had a big game last week at $5,700. And I would not be surprised at all if you saw Mason be the highest on running back, Brandon Duke be the highest on wide receiver, which I currently have projected. And I wouldn't be surprised if George Kittle ends up being the highest predicted tight end either. So it's just a complete chalk week down here for the 49ers just due to a lack of bodies in this offense. And those price tags are extremely cheap. Brock Purdy, I'm not exactly sure where we're going to see his ownership land. I don't remember what it was before I got on here because it's kind of early to look at ownership projections. And quarterback is usually very flat compared to the position players. But if everyone's playing the position players, I mean, don't forget about Brock Purdy in tournaments because I do think a lot of people might forgo him for better quarterbacks like a Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray, CJ Stroud, Lamar Jackson this week. So if you are playing the skill position players, please don't forget about Brock Purdy. And as for the Rams, I believe they're about seven points lower in the implied team total here, 25 and a half for the Rams and or for the 49ers and only 18. For the Rams here, I mean, it was an ugly, ugly game versus Arizona Cardinals. Obviously, they lost Cooper Cup as well. He's going to be off this week, so we're not without Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. So we are left with Demarcus Robinson, Tyler Johnson, Tutu Atwell. Also, have Cody Parkinson still at tight end, who's very cheap. Like, even if you're not just game stacking this, I do like Demarcus Robinson a lot of $5,000. Like, he is pretty much the wide receiver one for the Rams. I do think Tyler Johnson and them could be somewhat close in targets, but if I had to do assumptions, I would say Demarcus Robinson would be the next guy up to lead the team in targets. And a $5,000 to be Matthew Stafford's wide receiver one in a game script where they should be throwing the ball quite a bit. I have plenty of interest. Kyron Williams, not a big fan this week just because it's a game script. Yes, he could catch some dump offs and they were getting blown out last week versus the Cardinals and he was still in the game. So it's obviously a good thing for him. But really no interest in Stafford or them. Really, it's just more so Demarcus Robinson. And then really quick, I do think Seattle is a somewhat decent cheap stack. This week, obviously, the two wide receivers, JSN and DK Metcalf, monster games last week. 31.9 for Metcalf, 26.7 for JSN, 14 and 16 targets apiece, respectively. Pretty much got all the work in that one. And also, I don't mind Zach Charbonnet, assuming Kenneth Walker is going to be out once again. I know it wasn't the most productive day in the world. He had 14 carries, which is nice for the price point. Only 38 yards. Luckily, he found the end zone. Did have a handful of targets as well, which was the silver lining. But if Kenneth Walker is going to be out, a fine matchup versus Miami. We just saw James Cook absolutely cook them on Thursday Night Football. And Charbonnet is only $6,000, so the price really did not change whatsoever. I don't really have much interest in Tyler Lockett. But if you wanted to do a Geno Smith, Metcalf, and JSN stack this week, which is not that expensive whatsoever, I don't hate it. All right, moving over to our lineup, we're going to try to put this together. More so for a single entry build, guys. We're not building Millie Maker lineups. And also, don't copy and paste this. It is Wednesday, first off. A lot of information has to come out. And don't copy and paste lineups you see anyway. Build your own lineups. Use your own favorite plays. And you can apply a similar process if you want. This is how I do it for single entry type builds. So we need a quarterback. Obviously, lots of options we can go with. I think a lot of people would go with Kyler Murray. Jalen Hurts this week, which I have no issue with that whatsoever. Let's go with Brock Purdy in the passing attack. Obviously, Jordan Mason is going to be an awesome play. But we're going to forego it just to get a little bit different. This is one way to get different and still play very solid plays. 
We're going to look straight to Brandon Ayuk at only $6,200. I know it has not been a great season so far. And yeah, 4.8 points and 8.3. It's had five targets in both these games. So with the loss of Debo Samuel, obviously we should see an uptick in that. My projections love him this week. Top 10 in fantasy points, which at $6,200, that is absolutely screaming value and a great matchup versus the Los Angeles Rams. And let's just double stack with Purdy because if we're not playing Mason, and for the record, I love Mason this week, but you have to process it in your mind. If you are not playing Mason, oh, that means with their near 26-point implied team total, you are hoping those points are being scored from the passing attack. And since Brock Purdy is not really much of a rusher, I think it makes sense to double stack with Brock Purdy. We'll play George Kittle, heavily involved last week, eight targets, seven catches, even had to go to the locker room for an IV. But love the spot versus the Rams. And since we are doing that, let's just to take the assumption that the 49ers they're winning this game, which I know in theory would mean Jordan Mason, but let's just hope it's not a complete blowout. We'll run it back with Demarcus Robinson, extremely cheap and kind of similar to the 49ers where there's just a lack of bodies in this offense right now. And he's only 5,000 bucks. And this is honestly an extremely cheap stack. We have a QB one, wide receiver one and tight end one. We're running it back with the other teams, wide receiver one. And we still have nearly $5,500 to play with. And we still have a cheap defense we can plug in. And I would usually just play the cheapest one I possibly can. So at this point, we do need a running back or two at the very least. We could plug in a cheap defense really quick just to see what kind of actual money we have to play with. I don't really have interest in either of these defenses. I'm not fully against the Panthers versus the Raiders. I'm not also against, well, kind of am. Bears defense might be all right. Titans, but it sounds like Jordan Love might be back this week, which definitely does lessen my interest at the very least. Let's just throw in the Panthers. Like I, I do not think the Panthers defense is good by any means, but... It's going to afford us some extra money. So we should be able to get a couple of decent running backs here. Obviously, I love Saquon Barkley, love Alvin Kamara. Don't love Kyron Williams, but I really do like Jameer Gibbs. And honestly, I think Jameer Gibbs in this lineup would make a lot of sense because I think the Lions are going to put up a lot of points this week. And as you can see in this build, I don't have any Lions of the passing attack. So let's play Jameer Gibbs because honestly, that gives us access to the run game and it gives us access to the pass game. He has 13 targets through two weeks. Also has 24 carries. Like, I think Jameer Gibbs is the perfect play for this specific build to get exposure to that Detroit offense without playing the entire passing attack. And he's pretty cheap this week, and it's a great matchup versus the Arizona Cardinals. And then trying to get an RB2 here. Honestly, I, we might have money to be able to spend up. Like, if we want to play Saquon Barkley, we can at $7,700. And that would leave us with $5,100 left. And honestly, I think there should be enough value out there to make that work. If you didn't want to go with Saquon Barkley, save a couple of bucks here. We could play Alvin Kamara and then roll with Devontae Smith, the wide receiver, at $1,600. So we just went on to double up on the two Eagles. Problem is, if we do that, we're left with $3,500 bucks left. Then I'm not really sure there's anyone down here that I want to play. Obviously, if Justin Jefferson was out, that could create some value. I see Brandon Powell down there at $3,400. So we might have to forego the Alvin Kamara dream. But if we can try to go cheaper, we can get a Zach Charbonnet here at $6,000. That would leave us with 5000 bucks left, which I think is obviously a lot more flexible to work with. We have guys like McConkey, which Joshua Palmer, I know, is a bit banged up if he happened to miss. But the problem is Justin Herbert's a bit banged up in this matchup versus Pittsburgh. is kind of disgusting. But we'll just leave the flex spot up for imagination. But overall, I actually really like the roster construction for this build. So we have Brock Purdy paired with Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle. And we are... We're fading Jordan Mason in this specific build, so it makes sense to double stack with Purdy just to try to get exposure to that offense, hoping you're praying that Jordan Mason doesn't get two touchdowns. And for the record, I think he's an awesome play this week, but you know you have to kind of think about your process when you're building these types of lineups. Then we have Jameer Gibbs just to get access to that Detroit game. Zach Charbonnet, assuming Kenneth Walker is out, should get the rock at least close to 20 times in this game. Devontae Smith with no AJ Brown, and I want exposure to that game as well. Panthers defense, because who cares about defense in the flex spot? Use your, use your noggin, use your imagination, whatever you want to do. With that being said, guys, that's all I got for today's video. So if you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel for brand new. I'll be back Saturday to drop my core place video where I go more in depth, position by position, use the optimizer, put a lineup once again. And just the more information we have, the better. But I wish you all the best, and I'll see you all next time.